And here they are complete. We've got a dual wall, adhesive lined heat shrink, a seal in the lug, and same thing on the power. And we got our two accessory wires for battery powered accessories or accessories that need to have battery power. But you can see how much nicer it is. You can see how much more heat shrink I use compared to this original. It's cheap. You only get one chance. The more you seal it, the better off you are. So, and I should just add that these, when I make these connections, these connectors will be packed with dielectric grease. So. All right, so we got our battery connections complete. Nice and neat. See our two accessory wires here. Something else that I noticed uh, earlier and I forgot to mention. Um, the battery's not uh, being held down by anything. It's just sitting in there. Typical used car dealer. Can't even put a battery hole down in there. So in addition to the braided covering, I also put a piece of loom to protect it when I secure it underneath and that piece of loom comes all the way up under the hood to here. Um, this will be secured in this hole. I have uh, loom clamps. I can put one in the hole and then clamp this in place. And there's really nothing else sharp for it to rub on. It's pretty much just the bottom lip of the inner fender. But I'm going to secure it, like I say, underneath, probably to the top of that half ton of clevis with those two tabs sticking up. It'll be a perfect spot to secure it. Okay, so all that excess wire that um, I wanted to remove, I've removed. You see we put heat shrink on the ends, so they're what now be considered blunt cut wire. That's the one for the GM trucks. And then down here, we have the uh, high and low beam, also blunt cut with heat shrink on them. And then here where the, uh, the trailer plug used to be, cut that off, cut the braid back. Uh, we expose the wires so we can make connections, and then we put a little piece of heat shrink on here to stop the braid from unraveling. All right, so now I need to splice these wires together <coughs> from the 23061 to the main harness. Um, we have green with a white stripe, green and yellow, and then we have green, green with a black stripe, and yellow. And then the brown is going to be connected to the blue, which is the reverse, if you want to hook up the hands-free plowing. Um, I plugged the two plugs together just to show you um, how they align. The black with the, the green with the black stripe to the green with a white stripe, then green and yellow, yada, yada, yada. Now, if I was to install this the way Meyer wants, with this long 20-foot harness to the rear, see, you know, I can't unplug it with one hand, figures. Okay. They include this harness. It's a T that goes on the back of the trailer plug in the rear of the vehicle. And then it's a nice sealed connection, as you can see at this end. Right, just like your trailer plug. But then at the other end, we just have a number, or excuse me, a four pin standard trailer connector that. <laughs> is not going to be a sealed connection. Any unsealed connection on a plow system is going to give you a problem. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but down the road, they're just going to come one after another. All your electrical connections must be sealed. Not with tape, not with a quick splice. Sealed. Heat shrink. If you can't submerge it, then it's not sealed. Well, you can make fun of me if you want, or call me unprofessional, or whatever it is that you're thinking. But I can tell you that I never solder wires. Never. Uninsulated butt splices. And then we cover them with dual wall adhesive lined heat shrink. And then that seals all the connections. It also provides strain relief at the joint. 
if I was to solder these together, a lot of times solder makes the wires brittle. It's very time consuming. And I just don't see the added benefit of it being soldered because if you look over this vehicle with a fine tooth comb, you will not find one soldered joint on any of the wiring. So why should I solder it? 